Martin here at uh, 2009 of VintageRock.com. I'm uh, here with the guitar maestro himself. My good friend, Mr. George Lynch. How you doing, dude? I was supposed to be in gay, but he couldn't be here. So <laughs> the, 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 You've done this before, right? A couple of times. A couple of times. Anyway. Nonetheless, we're at the uh, at the Randall booth, and uh, George just got done playing with Marco Mendoza and others. And uh, tell me... Uh, Who are those other guys? I don't know. You could, that's what I was going to ask you, dude. You know, it wasn't Spinal Tap was like normal. That was an ethnic thing. That was a world band, wasn't it? Yeah. We had a black guy. We had Marcos, the Mexican guy. I don't know what I am. A little Eskimo, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. His family was Beautiful. sailors, you know? Yeah. So tell us about your uh, your association with Explains Randall. Explains all the semen. His father, his father was a comedian, too, so, you know, there you go. Nonetheless, tell me tell me about your uh, your association with Randall. Well, uh, I came to Randall in 1981, I believe, and uh, was working with Gary Sunder, the chief engineer there, and we developed the RG100, which is a transistor amp uh, based off the RG80, and uh, Dawkin used that. Uh, we were fully backlined Randall uh, RG100s for the Tooth and Nail record and tour, and um, the owner of your radio station was the photographer on the back of that cover. I just remembered that. Rob Absolutely, Jones. the great Rob Jones. Yeah. And uh, so, um, and I moved away from Randall, but on one of the tours we did, uh, we used to play a lot with Pantera back then when they were more of a Van Halen kind of style band. Uh, they didn't have uh, the singer that they more, had more recently, but. They were more of an 80s thing, and uh, and Dimebag was more of an Eddie, Eddie, Eddie clone, and they were really big fans of ours. I mean, they, they really enjoyed our music, and we enjoyed theirs as well. He was ripping, but uh, we'd play all these Texas dates, Beaumont's in Texas, and he would, they'd be in the front row, and he'd just be digging on these amps. So he moved to Washburn, and as you know, and Dimebag had the uh, had his own signature amp and everything, and he's passed on. And, and uh, when that happened, I moved to, had moved away from a, a former company I was working with, developing amplifiers, and I, I went back to the guys here and said, you know, I have a history with you guys, and uh, I think this would make sense for me, and I don't know if it makes sense for you. And they, they, were, uh, they were all up in arms and thought that it would be wonderful, and it's been about four years now, and we have the, uh, the Lynchbox series amplifiers, which are modular, and uh, we're constantly developing and the, the amp is constantly evolving, which is wonderful. It's what I wanted. I just didn't want to build something and say, okay, that's it. We don't touch it. We, we continue to update it. We change out components and improve it and expand the line. So now, besides the 100-watt stack, we have the 50-watt, which is much lighter, easier to deal with. That has two modules versus three. And now we're coming out with the student model. It's a 15-watt student model. We've got the combo, the 212 combo, and a lot of other things in the pipeline. And that also led to my relationship with Washburn, who's also owned by U.S. Music Corporation. And we developed the uh, Evil Western acoustic guitar, which has got a, an amazing graphic on it and all kinds of neat, you know, technical things that I don't want to get into now, but makes it quite different than your average uh, acoustic guitar. It's really an acoustic guitar meant for rock guys. So it's visually stunning and, and plays more like an electric guitar. Than kind of like some rock guys themselves, right? Visually it's stunning. Stunning, yes. Uh, there's a lot of those here at NAMM, by the way. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. But being like such a, a renowned gearhead, dude, is there anything um, that you actually can't... Oh, there's my phone. There's, is there anything that you actually can't live without on the road besides, obviously, the guitar amps and chords? Is there, like, one particular piece of apparatus that gives you, like, your particular sound above and beyond everything else that you use? Yeah, having a penis, I think, is important. Um, I think that's so my coming. <laughs> without that... <laughs> <laughs> you just don't care. No, uh, no. Uh, I would say the amp. If I had to have one thing, and I could be discretionary about it, I would say the amplifier is really the heart of your tone. I mean, guitars would be second, but pretty much anything playable that's decent, as far as a guitar, uh, would work if I had the amp. And uh, what doesn't necessarily work the other way around? You could have the you know the 58 flame top, $500,000 Les Paul. If you got a crappy amp, it isn't going to matter. So it's like a good looking girl with bad teeth. <laughs> yeah, you know, pretty face, bad body, yeah, nice yeah. body, pretty face. You know which one? So that's a subjective call. But for me personally, the amp is the foundation and the core uh, of, of my tool set to be able to do what I do. Guitar would be second, and then on down the line. 
you know, your, in, in your signal chain. Speakers are important. Uh, we took a lot of care in developing the right speaker for the Lynch box, and what we did was we went to Eminence, and uh, my favorite cabinet from back in the day is old high watt ported cabinets with Fane speakers, Nico Ferrite magnets, a very unique speaker in it. Similar to a Celestion, but yet clear, a little bit clearer, and, uh, uh, and, and, and so it doesn't sound like anything else. And so we sort of emulated that old Fane speaker, and uh, that's called the Super V speaker, and that's what we load into the Lynch boxes, which also has the, the very small port in the back, which gives a little bit more of that thump right here when you're playing at level you know, with a band, where you can really not only hear it but feel it. You know, you know it, it just it, you know it matches with mates with that kick drum, and and out front. That really makes a difference. Awesome. Now, lots of product coming out from you these days. Yeah, that's uh, a sold, company. <laughs> but in terms, of, in terms of the actual end product, the music product these days, switch gears a little bit.